I get asked all the time, what's better, this snake or that snake? And the most often asked about comparison, Dumerals boas or ball pythons? So today, let's go over what's better. Is it a Dumerals boa or is it a ball python? My name's Adam, this is Medusa. You're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles, stick around. pythons are medium-sized terrestrial animals. They're python species from Western Africa. Dumerals boas, like Cubone here, are medium-sized, heavy-bodied animals. They're ground boas from Madagascar. So to do this head-to-head, -head, let's break it down to six categories, and we'll start with number one, size. And these snakes do have a different size between the two. A Dumerals boa, this is a year-old Dumerals boa, so she'll get quite a bit bigger. And females, they do get bigger than males, just like the ball pythons. So you're gonna expect something four to six foot with a Dumerals boa. With a ball python, you're gonna have a three to five foot animal more, more than likely. Uh, last week, if you wanna watch the video up here, we talked about most handleable reptiles, which both of these were on that list. But the ball python I chose to use for that video is five and a half feet and six and a half pounds. So it's just kind of an outlier. You're gonna have outliers either way. Um, and like you can see in this clip here, my buddy Sean on SNS Serpentarium, he's got a seven and a half foot Dumerals boa or six and a half, it's, it's a large very large snake. But either way, if you want a smaller Dumerals boa, you get a male. If you want a smaller ball python, then you get a male. But at the end of the day, on average, your Dumerals boa will get bigger than your ball python. So I can't really give it to one or the other. It's going to be a tie on this one because do you want a bigger snake or do you want a smaller snake? It's kind of, you know, your preference. So we'll just leave it tied, one a piece. Now after you figure out size, another big thing is how big is the enclosure? How big of a footprint is this animal going to take in my home? The good news is neither one takes a ton of space. There's still a good size amount of space. Like for example, a ball python like this, this is about as big as a ball python will get. This is a big female, she is gravid, so most of them are gonna be this big. This girl here, she sits in a uh, four by two by one enclosure. So the important thing is not so much height for either of these animals because they're not gonna climb. They're both terrestrial snakes, but uh, the, the Dumerals boa will need a, a little bit of a bigger space. So two by four, so eight foot, eight square foot of enclosure space for a ball python, full grown. Males can probably live in something a little bit smaller, but when it comes to a Dumerals boa, you're definitely gonna need a bigger space once they get out to a full size Dumerals boa, if they get to a full size, like, you know, six or even seven feet sometimes, uh, it's not unheard of for Dumerals boas to be seven feet, then you might need something that's two by six or three by six even, depending on how big they get. So I guess at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say here is no matter what, a ball python will likely need a smaller enclosure. So we're going to give this one to the ball python, which breaks the tie and ball pythons are in the lead. Now, maybe the most important thing after all is the behavior of these animals, because if it's a boring animal to you, you're not going to interact with it and you'll probably end up neglecting it or at least not having a good time taking good care of it. So you want something that's interesting to you. And these guys do have different personalities, in my opinion. First things first, uh, ball python is often seen as a boring species because they often just lay around, they sit, they don't do too much movement. Uh, but I mean, I, I guess what the good thing is, is they're really docile, but that goes for the Dumerals boa too. Dumerals boas are known to be quite docile as well. Maybe not so much as a ball python, but in general, both are pretty reluctant to bite. And I knock on wood as I hold a snake as I say that. But in general, you're not going to have too much to worry about when you're pulling them out of the enclosure. Same thing with any other snake. Make sure they know you're not food because... Both of them can have good food drives, right? I guess the difference would be Dumerals boas don't go off of food as much as, say, a ball python would. I will add, though, if you want something that's a little bit more inquisitive, uh, like I know you see this comparison a lot more often between a common boa, a red tail boa, and a ball python. If you want something more like a boa, then you'd want a Dumerals boa for sure. The Dumerals boa just seems to be a little bit more inquisitive and looking around, where this thing is a little bit more derpy and just kind of doesn't really move a lot. If I had to pick which is the easier snake in terms of handling, it's probably the ball python. Dumerals boas are a little bit more curious. Uh, they look around a little bit more. They're not squirmy by any means, but they do move quite a bit more than this potato here that hasn't really moved the entire time we've been talking. 
but a ball python is going to be more predictable. So for this reason, on a thin, thin margin, I will give this one to the ball python, which means that the ball python stays in the lead. You're a winner, Medusa. Another really important factor that has to do with housing is heat, humidity, and lighting. We'll call it environment to make it easy so it fits on this graphic here. Basically, this just means how hard is it to keep this snake, right? If the size of the enclosure didn't scare you away, well, heat, humidity, and lighting is another important thing. Now, the nice thing with lighting, with both of these snakes, they don't need UVB, so they just need a day and a night cycle, basically. So they need to know when it's daytime and need to know when it is nighttime. And that's gonna be a 12-12 split or 8-16. I've got care guides in both of these, uh, Dumal's Boa care guide up here if you're interested. So that's all that matters with lighting. Now, with heat and humidity, they do differ a bit. But with both of these snakes, you don't have to worry about very high basking temperatures or big fluctuations or anything like that. It's pretty easy to keep the, the heat on both of these animals so you don't have to worry too much about the difference um, although in the care guides that break it down to specifics they're very similar humidity is where we get the winner of the category because a dumal's boa needs a humidity level much lower than a ball python if you want to keep a ball python and you're in florida it's going to be a lot easier than keeping a dumal's boa but if you're in new mexico a dumal's boa is going to be the easier choice because a dumal's boa needs less humidity so it just depends but in my opinion it's always easier to pump in humidity than take it out however it's usually a lot closer in most environments if you let unless you live in the swamps of florida to have an environment that is more suitable for a dumal's boa so in most cases your home will be perfect the humidity level for a dumal's boa where most homes don't sit at 60 or 70 percent humidity so for that reason i'm going to give this to the dumal's boa i guess you know finally got one for the dumal's boa ball python still in the lead though to round this comparison off between the dumal's boa and the ball python we'll go to our last category cost availability and morph because do you want something that's a little bit different looking than what they look like in the wild? Uh, does it need to be super cheap or would you rather something a little bit more expensive? Is it something that you can find in your area? Now the good thing is with a ball python, a ball python like Medusa here who looks normal is going to be almost impossible not to find at any pet expo, reptile store, even like a pet store that doesn't specialize in reptiles. You'll find this looking type of snake over and over 100% of the time if you're going to a reptile shop or an expo. She is het for albino, so that's, uh, I guess, the next thing is morph, right? Do you want something that can be yellow, can be black, can be white? Well, if you want something like that, you want a ball python, 100%. There are no Dermal's Boas morphs. There are some line bred traits, but no actual mutations. So if you want something that looks crazy and looks different than your buddy's ball python or your, your buddy's Dermal's Boa, well, your Dermal's Boas are going to look pretty darn similar. Your ball pythons can be completely different colors. And as for cost, which is the million dollar question, or for ball pythons, $40 question, because ball pythons can be found for as little, I've literally bought a normal ball python for $5 one time. Generally, you're gonna find them in a pet store, a big name pet store, which I don't recommend you ever going to, will sell them to you for 90 bucks, 70 bucks, which is ridiculous. Because if you go to a pet expo or a reptile expo or reptile shop, you'll find these guys for 40 bucks or less all day long. Jumbo's boas, on the other hand, uh, a little bit harder to find, and you're gonna spend 250 or more, probably. I mean, in my area, I've seen them as much as 500 bucks. It's probably more common, 200-ish or up, you know what I mean? But in general, it's not gonna be cheaper or as cheap as a ball python 100% of the time. This snake is actually like quite heavy. It's a big, thick girl. So I don't really think I can tie this up. A, a ball python's gonna win this last category as well. And, and listen, okay, I know that I said uh, a ball python wins this category and they've won, you know, most of the categories here. I think, what, what's the score? Three to two, right? But in my opinion, I, I don't know, I kind of like Dermal's bow is better. So it's just an objective thing. That's what I'm trying to say here. You know, the gods of snakes didn't come down and hand me this list on a mountain. I just thought of it myself. So it's up to you. What do you like best? You know, do you have some people like red, some people like yellow. It doesn't mean that you're wrong. Same thing with this. If you think a ball python is better for you, it doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means, you know, there's certain things that you like better about ball pythons. If you like Dumal's boas, well, hey, welcome to the club. I'm a Dumal's boa guy too. So there you go. That is my comparison of who would win a head-to-head -head contest between a ball python and a Dumal's boa. What do you think? Did I miss something? Did I mess something up? Uh, should I have added a different category? Throw in the comment section. I got the idea for this video to the comment section, like all of them. So if you want your idea to be next, throw it down there and maybe we can talk about your idea next week. As always, a very special thank you for our Patreon supporters. She's like, 
Can you tie it on a knot? Can you tie him in a bow? It's because of you guys that I can go and buy huge amounts of rats and mice to feed the entire collection. So if you want to see extra stuff, uh, if you want to know about new animals that I get weeks before I put it on the channel, if you want to know about breeding projects, see bloopers, things like that, for as little as a dollar a month, you can be a Patreon supporter. And for everyone who took the time to hit the like button, hit subscribe, watch this video, thank you. It's the coolest thing, talking to a camera in your basement and people watch for some reason. Because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday.